mustache check tilak check smile check here we go hello viewers welcome to my channel itj olympiads and ap physics with ambarish and today i have brought another interesting problem for, for all of you this is problem uh, from ch challenge your understanding pathfinder magnetics so let me present the problem and then we'll see how to solve this one okay so let's see here's the problem i'll read out for you okay a tightly wound thin wire semi infinite solenoid of radius r and n turns per unit length carries a current i okay magnetic field well inside the solenoid is uniform but near the end it fans out okay so uh, here's the solenoid and uh, there will be you know that uh, field lines will be there coming outside but outside they'll also fan out right in fact uh, the fanning out starts uh, very near to the end itself okay some field lines will escape from a turn from here itself but there will be some field lines going and there will be some fanning out okay so there will be axial component of field as well as radial component of field okay so magnetic field well inside the solenoid is uniform but near the end it fans out find the magnetic induction vector b in terms of radial and axial components at a point outside the solenoid at a distance x from the end and a very small distance r from the axis so somewhere over here let's say at x distance there is some radial component and some axial component so we are interested in finding the radial and axial component at a distance r from the axis and r is very very small as compared to x that's given okay uh, you may uh, denote unit vector in positive x direction by ex and unit vector away from x axis in the yz plane by er okay so this is your e cap r and this is your e cap x okay so if you want you can give it a try i am going to present two methods of doing this one okay so many of you might be familiar with one of the methods that's the flux method i'll tell you one more method of solving this problem so hold tight and uh, let's see how to do this one okay so method one is uh, uh, that's how most people do it that's the method using gauss law so what uh, you know that uh, what's the gauss law for magnetism that net flux through any closed surface is always zero so what i have done at a distance x i have considered a pill box shaped gaussian surface so small cylinder you can imagine okay and let's say at the left the magnetic field is b of x and on the right surface magnetic field is b of x plus d b of x so slight change in magnetic field on the right side and the left side and let's say the radial component of field uh, on the curved surface of this is b uh, r okay now we can use the gauss law for magnetism so flux through the right surface will be bx plus dbx into pi r square pi r square is this area and here the it is against the normal vector so minus bx into pi r square and b radial uh, is along the curved surface that is 2 pi r into dx okay so b radial into 2 pi r into dx this is equal to 0 and now uh, you can just see so, so many things cancelling cancelling out so bx into pi r square and bx into pi r square will cancel out <coughs> and the whole thing can be divided by pi so things will simplify and this is what you get upon rearranging equation 1 that is radial field is minus r by 2 into db by dx that is rate of change of magnetic field with respect to x so now it's just a matter of calculation and i'll be doing the calculations later on uh, i'll just tell the physics of the second method also in one go itself and then i'll be doing the calculations okay so this is one first method and then let's look at the second method okay method two magnetic force so uh, you see uh, i i imagine a current carrying loop on the axis a current carrying loop of radius small r so you know that the force on this uh, uh, loop will be due to the radial component of the magnetic field because i l cross b if you see i is going like this and b radial is let us say suppose you want on this element so b radial is like this and ideal is like that so ideal cross b is uh, uh, like uh, ideal is into the page you can say kind of it's a 3d imagination if you do so ideal is like this okay and b radial uh, is upward you can say uh, at this element so so ideal cross b will be like what ideal cross b is coming outward so that will cause an axial force on this loop right because of the radial component of field of course uh, uh, the the uh, magnetic force due to the axial component of field will be zero because axial field will cause a radial uh, uh, force and the radial uh, field will cause an axial force so radial field force will ob obviously cancel out so uh, radial field will give the net axial force okay so what's that magnetic for uh, force that will be i into 2 pi r into b radial into i cap so this direction is i cap 
I hope you understood. This is just uh, I showed you for DL and you can integrate over the entire loop. Then the force simply becomes IL cross B kind of you can see I into 2 pi R into B radial. Okay. And uh, also this another method for finding the force. You know that magnetic potential energy is related to the magnetic force. How? Magnetic force is minus del U by del X uh, I cap, right? Uh, Fx. So B for magnetic force in the X direction. Okay. And what is the magnetic potential energy? That is minus M dot B. Okay. So if you do that, uh, okay. So minus del by del X of it should be minus M dot B. Okay. And you simplify this uh, here. There will be some I have messed up some plus minus signs. Uh, doesn't matter okay so uh, you make it a plus over here and this will be a minus over there and i am interested in magnitude so i am not worrying too much about plus and minus okay so uh, now from equation 3 and 4 uh, i can just equate the magnetic force this force with this magnetic force uh, calculated in two ways and if you simplify that you get the same result okay so b radial is minus r by 2 db by dx the same result okay so now uh, this equation 6 is same as equation 2. This is this equation 2 and this is equation 6. Both are same equations you can see. Okay. So uh, uh, so now uh, we got the same result using both logics. The flux logic and the uh, force logic. Okay. So now field on the axis of solenoid. Now we are ready to do the calculations. I want just want to calculate dB by dx. So let's see how to do that. So field on the axis of a solenoid is given by mu naught ni sin alpha plus sin beta. So you draw the perpendicular on the right extremity angle is alpha on the left extremity angle is beta. Then field on the axis is mu naught ni by 2 sin alpha plus sin beta. This you uh, study as a standard result while deriving field on the axis of a solenoid. Okay. And if alpha and beta lie on the same side then of course instead of sin alpha this uh, suppose alpha is also backward then it will become minus sin alpha like in our case you can see. Uh, beta is going to be 90 degree okay so if it's a semi infinite solenoid you know that beta is going to be way backward so that this angle will be also almost 90 degree for an inf semi infinite solenoid and alpha instead of coming to the rightward side it's uh, alpha is coming to the left itself so instead of sine beta minus sine plus sine alpha i'll have to take sine beta minus sine alpha because alpha is uh, on the left side of the normal okay and alpha because alpha and beta are on the same side of the normal and of course beta is 90 degree and what about sine alpha so you you see this distance is x and this is r and this is under root of r square plus x square so this is alpha then this angle is also alpha so sine alpha is x upon under root of r square plus x square so x component of field is then simply uh, mu naught ni into 1 because sine 90 is 1 1 minus x upon under root of r square plus x square now what do you do now you can do uh, minus del uh, del uh, uh, minus r by 2 db by dx you can calculate so just differentiate this with respect to x and uh, if you do that uh, it's a simple differentiation you can do that uh, i've just directly written the derivative so minus r by 2 db by dx here is your radial uh, f uh, magnetic field so that comes out to be mu naught ni by 4 r square r upon r square plus x square power 3 by 2 just di differentiating this and minus r by 2 so this is the radial field and the other one was uh, this was the axial field okay so equation 7 is the axial field this is the radial field combine the two and you get the total field so this much is uh, your axial component and this is your radial component so that was my analysis of this problem i hope you uh, enjoyed this analysis and if you did enjoy this analysis and you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever cord you use for networking with them and most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel you know what to do please hit that subscribe button right now and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you